Welcome back to Allen High School's discussion of the laboratory. And we're working right now on moving into our safety rules. Now, when for my kiddos, when you were online and you filled out a survey, part of that survey was to type in your name, and that was acknowledging that you agree to abide by all safety rules. I'm going to go through these quickly because they don't require a lot of explanation, but they're still uber, uber important. So let's move into this. Number one, you better wear your goggles. And I'm serious about this. I will be checking. If I see you without goggles or another teacher, worse yet, comes in and sees you without your goggles and says something to me, maybe I got distracted, you lose double points. So you got to wear your goggles. It's for you. Your eyes are beautiful. We want to keep them that way. And check out my poster about Carol in the back of the room. Remember, you don't want to be a Carol. Okay. Now the next one is you, you have to wear closed-toed shoes. Now, ideally, you know, you would wear leather shoes that are chemical resistant and that type of thing. Um, we can't really have you do that. Uh, but we do need you to wear shoes that fully encompass your whole foot. Now, they don't have to be up to your ankle, but they do have to cover your heel, and they've got to fully cover your toes and all the way up, all right? Now, I have a drawer, so I have a shoe drawer. If you don't have closed-toed shoes on, you're going to have to wear shoes from my shoe drawer, and I don't know who had those last. Um, or you can bring a pair of shoes in, and I'll find a good spot for you to keep them if you're afraid you'll forget. But you better wear closed-toed shoes. All right. We do have you wear aprons to protect your clothing. So many of my clothing is just wrecked by little acid spills, um, and you don't want that to happen. I wash your aprons and mend your aprons, and bear in mind, you must always tie them in a bow, not a knot, <laughs> because I spend too much time sewing them, because you break them when you tie them in knots. So tie them in a bow, and if you don't know how to tie a bow, get somebody to do it for you. No eating or drinking during labs. Wash your hands. I was reading a website that said, you know you might be a chemist stiff. And it said, you, might, you know you might be a chemist stiff. you wash your hands before you go to the bathroom. So when you leave, you wash your hands, regardless of whether you think it was safe or not. You don't know what was on that lab bench or in that, that glassware before you. Pull back long hair. I have rubber bands. I don't really have you know, the nice ponytail holders, so you might want to have one in your backpack if you have long, guys or girls anymore, if you have long hair, okay? Especially on days with Bunsen burners, because I don't want your hair to catch fire. It's never happened to me, so we don't ever, ever want it to happen. All right, it, we're not going to be dealing too much with corrosives, but I do have some rubber gloves handy if we're dealing with any corrosives. That's more when you get into AP chemistry with me, we work with a little bit more challenging, shall we say, chemi chemicals, and you will need to wear uh, rubber gloves for those. Okay, let's take a look at some other safety tips. Um, those are kind of the personal protective equipment. All right, never, ever, ever taste anything in the lab. The only time I'm going to let you taste something in the lab is if I convince you to take AP Chemistry with me. It's AP and IBHL1, and we make liquid nitrogen ice cream. So then you can taste something in lab, but never, ever anything else. Never, ever perform unauthorized experiments. If you are not explicitly told to combine chemicals, then don't do it, period. Okay? Um, I, there's a fume hood. If you look in the back of my room, there's a fume hood. There's an eye wash in the back, and then just to the left of the eye wash is a fume hood. It's got a glass door on the front of it, and it's got a chemical cabinet underneath it. And that fume hood is designed to draw toxic fumes up and away, and so they don't go into the room. So we'll use fume hoods again much more in AP chemistry than we do in AP and IB than we do in pre-AP chemistry. Never, ever put chemicals back in the reagent bottle that I have. You'll contaminate them. Um, you can ask me. Come and ask me before you, you know, if you've got too much. Uh, what we may be able to do is ask somebody else in the room. Maybe somebody hasn't poured their chemical out yet, and we can still use it. Um, but we don't want to put it back in the original bottle, or you may contaminate the other chemicals and wreck the experiment for the rest of the class. So, uh, Always ask me how to dispose of things, okay? 
make sure you close. Boy, I have more trouble with this. I may have to make my AP kids watch this video too. In fact, I think I'm going to do that because they're not so good at closing chemical containers after use. Again, you leave them out, they can be contaminated, and many of our chemicals absorb water. So if they absorb water, they're ruined. They may react with the water, even if they don't, you know, if they just wet or react, in either way, they could be useless, okay? Now, make sure you clean up spills from the counter and the balances. Now, I have little balance brushes. Actually, they're makeup brushes <laughs> that I've donated to the cause, so to speak. And you want to make sure you clean all chemicals off the balances because it can corrode. We never, ever, ever put uh, chemicals directly on the balance. So you don't put, I don't know where to put this because I'm not sure where it is, but it be, would be worth uh, repeating. Don't put chemicals directly on the balance. They always have to be weighed in something. Okay? Not directly. Okay. Um, now, disposal. You always want to ask me. Uh, I will have usually laid out some containers that say disposal. Our waste typically cannot go down the drain. Um, and so when you never, ever, ever want to throw chemicals down the drain, anything, especially solids. I have more trouble with my sink stopping up because there's a really, really fine trap in them. And so I'll typically have you bring it up and we'll run it through a coffee filter or something to capture it. Um, but don't, just don't put anything down the drain unless I've explicitly said, yes, this can go down the drain. Even acids and bases, I have to treat them before we dump them down the drain. I have to neutralize them. So don't put anything down the drain. Okay, now smell chemicals, most of you know. Um, I'll, I'll demonstrate what wafting is, but you hold it a little bit away from your nose and then you use your hand to kind of wave or push the vapors towards your nose. And you can gradually bring the test tube to your nose as you realize that it's you know not going to be an overwhelming odor. But you always want to start with the test tube a little bit away from your nose and then push the vapors towards you so you can smell them. Always heat test tubes so they're pointed away from people. Uh, there are times when they'll pop and you know acid or chemical will get on you and it'll be hot or you'll get chemical burns. Now you know what in AP Chemistry this is one of their favorite things to ask and if you're asked to design a procedure we're going to be looking that you carefully said that acid is poured into water. We don't pour water into acid. Never the opposite. It's always add acid to water, like A and W root beer. And part of that is because uh, many of the experiments generate a lot of heat. And if you have a lot of acid there and you start adding water, it's going to generate too much heat, too fast, not in a controlled manner, and it can splash and break the glass and hurt people. So be very, very careful. Um, we're going to either do an activity or show you where all of our safety equipment is in the, uh, throughout the room. And the key is be smart. Y'all are brilliant. You want to use that common sense. If you're doubting something, if you're worried about something, you come talk to me and I'll help you out. All right, now, what do we do in an emergency? Well, I think I'm going to save this for the next video, and we can finish up some of our safety then. So until then, this is signing off.